Okay, this is the exciting part where we are starting lesson 19 and we've been working towards this for days and days and weeks really and we get to do the standard algorithm in division, yay! And so we're finally making sense of all this. Why are we estimating and what are these numbers made of and what do we do with them? So notes here, lesson 19, the, the objective is to divide two and three digit dividends by multiples of 10, so they make it really easy to start, uh, with single digit quotients, the answer that's really simple, and connect to a written method. That just means let's do this in the standard algorithm or standard form. So um, we are gonna be using the divide and check method. And you might say, why do I have to do the check? And I would say, because it's gonna tell you if you're right or how well you're doing or if you're wrong, like that's your check. Wouldn't you wanna know if you got it right? So take the time to do the check because it's really an important step. At least in the beginning, we do a lot of checking. Um, so let's start out with some easy ones. Let's say if we have 70 divided by 30, if you're estimating around the divisor first, it's already rounded, so let's use a multiple. The whole point of doing this is so that I can figure out what digit is going to go in the quotient. So it's an easy quotient estimate. That's what you do. Like that's why you're you're learning to estimate before you actually do the division. Now the standard algorithm is going to be to take this dividend that comes first, the whole, put it on the inside break it into the group. So this is like, I'm taking it apart by 30. How many times does it go in there? Two. Then the whole division family, the divide, uh, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down, and that's the division family. Remember the D, M, uh, S, C, B for the dad, mom, sister, cousin, brother. And so, um, but today you may have, well, you will have remainders. And so the important thing to remember is that when you compare your remainder to the divisor, this needs to be less. Why? Because this is what's left over. I've used up as much as I can to create full sets of 30. Okay, I have two full sets of 30 and I've used 60, but I have 10 left over, okay? The leftovers cannot be greater than your full set. Otherwise, you need to bump this up and make another set, okay? So uh, this is a really important number. And if you might be used to, oh, annex is zero, uh, decimal and a zero, and continue dividing. Well, that's not what we're doing today. Today, we're going to take that remainder and do something with it. We're going to have a check, which is going to be the multiplication step here. Take your... Uh, divisor and multiply it by your quotient just to prove how many. So it's 30 times 2 is 60 are used. Add the remainder of 10 to get the dividend that you started with. And you compare actively this uh, answer that you get in your check to make sure that the dividend is actually what you started with. If this doesn't match, something went wrong in the process. And so then just a couple more practice problems uh, in the teacher's guide that hopefully you'll do with your teachers if you're not in my class. Uh, this 430 divided by 60 and again you want to have a compatible number so you can guess the number that goes in the quotient first. You won't always guess right. That's okay. Uh, just continue guessing. And then do your multiplication, your actual solution here, 420, subtract, here's your remainder. Now do the check. It's the outsides, 60 times 7, you get that 420, and then you add the remainder to get your actual dividend. Now, another way of looking at this is by taking this whole dividend, the whole thing, W-H-O-L-E, this is the whole, W-H-O-L-E, the whole kit and caboodle, and you break it up into logical parts, okay, which part? Well, 420 is what's used in equal sets. It's seven groups of 60. Those are the equal sets. This is the leftovers. But when you put these two together, they make up the 430. So that's the idea behind the work today. There's one more little practice problem up here. 
and uh, hopefully it'll focus, but you can kind of maybe almost see it, 572 divided by 90, and that is gonna be approximately 540, come on, man, focus. 540 divided by 90 equals six, and, uh, and that's where you get the six to guess for your quotient before you do your actual multiplication. Six times zero is zero, six times nine is 54. Do your subtraction, you get 32 for your remainder. So to check, 90 times six, that's the I've got 540 because of the six groups of 90. Add the 32, double check that you got 572, and that would be your final answer. So those are the notes for today. And then uh, in the book, the problems are gonna be short and sweet, but you must check. If you need to like section off your book so that you will remember to fill in this side, do it. So let's get started. 80 divided by 30. Um, half the battle is just figuring out where the numbers go. But the 30 goes on the outside and 80 goes on the inside. This is the hole or the thing that's being shared, so we put it on the inside so we can carve it up. And, um, and then your estimating is how many times I can multiply this to get that, or 80 divided by 30. If I had, say, 60 divided by 30, I could get two. But if I had 90 divided by 30, I would have three, but that would be too big, and then I can't subtract 90 from 80. So the logical reasoning part is like, what do I put up here? Another thing I have to tell you, very important. This is not just an answer line. These are place value positions, and it matters where you put that two. Do not put the two over the eight. If you put it there, erase it and move it over here. It needs to go over the zero. This is the ones place, okay? Now, two ones times 30 makes 60, and it needs to be in the zero in the ones place and six in the tens place. Then you subtract and you get 20. And in your quick comparison, it's okay that this is still pretty big because it's less than 30. I cannot make another complete set of 30 with my 20. So that's my remainder. So in the check, you take the 30 and the two, and you multiply them to get the 60. And you add on your remainder, and then you get 80. And when you get this, you go, okay, compare. And then when it compares correctly, I always like to put a smiley face just because, um, just because, because they're nice. So let's do another one. And if I start taking up too much room, I'll start writing smaller. Okay, so 50 on the outside and 71 on the inside. Now I can't have two of 50 because that would be 100. So I'm just gonna put one in the ones place. 50 times one is 50, subtract and I get 21. Now we're stopping here. This is our, our practice for, for today, is just do the multiplication and then take that big fat remainder and just add it. When you get your 71, compare it to what you had and if you get it right, you get a smiley face. Okay, yay, so we're doing great. Set up another one. 30 is the divisor, 270 is the dividend. And I'm looking at this going, hmm, how lovely. This is a multiple of three. So I, I know it's gonna be exact. If I had this all laid out, I would just cross out the zeros and know that it's nine. But since it's standard algorithm and they both have zeros, I have to deal with this. So I'm gonna put my nine in the ones place and then I'm gonna to proceed to multiply nine times zero is zero, nine times three is 27, and I have an exact answer with no remainder. So in order to check, it's just 30 times nine. And you get 270, and that is the same as what I started with, so huzzah. Okay, next one, 80, and then 643 is the dividend, and again, Looking at how many digits, I cannot fit 80 into 64, so I have to go over here to the ones place. But 64 is a multiple of eight. So I can guess eight, multiply eight times zero is zero in the ones place, eight times eight is 64, 
and I subtract and I have a remainder of three, eight R three. Did I put the remainders up? I did not, terrible, just terrible, remainder 20. Don't forget to write the remainder because remember you have to do that, put a nice capital R so that it doesn't look like a, another digit in your answer. And then underline it, make it really clear. Um, uh, so now we need to check. 80 times eight is 640, and then add your remainder, and you get 643, and compare. Don't forget the compare step. That's what this is all about. And then last one, 90 into 215. And now, again, if I was going to estimate, and I would say, well, what's a multiple of nine that's close to 21? Well, 18 is less, but 27 would be the next one that's too big. So I'm gonna take the two from the 18, two times zero is zero, two times nine is 18. Do your subtraction, five minus zero. And then if you want to do your standard algorithm with the borrowing and regrouping, you can do that here. But guess what? I just need to find the difference between 18 and 21. So 19, 20, 21, the difference is three. So if you're just looking to find the difference, it's 21 minus 18, that's what's left. If you're still comfortable bringing it down and saying take one, give 10, you get 11 minus eight is three, and then this would be left with the one, and it'll work out either way. I'm just saying, hey, guess what? There's another way. R35. Now we have 90 times two, two times zero is zero, two times nine is eight. There's that 18 but I still have my remainder of 35 that I need to put back so that I can figure out what my hole was in the beginning. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and it's 215, and I just proved it, and I did all my work correctly. So turning the page, now we have a couple of word problems, and then we'll be finished for today. So Terry says the solution to 299 divided by 40 is 6 with a remainder of 59. Okay, so he's got 299 divided by 40 is this. Here's his work. Here's the subtraction. His work is shown below. Explain Terry's error. And you're like, oh no, what, what happened here? Error in thinking and then find the correct quotient using the space on the right. So what's happening here? This is a reasoning question. We would spend a lot of time talking about this in class. But since this is a video and there's nobody here except me, um, let's figure out what the problem is. Okay, if I was to divide, and let's say I guess the six, six times zero is zero, six times four is 24, and you subtract and you get 59. Whew. 59. Compare that. Don't forget the cousin, that compare step. Right now, this is like, oh, this is too big. Okay? As soon as you see that your remainder or leftover portion is bigger than your, your divisor, you have to like red flag and stop, stop what you're doing, stop. This could be bigger. I need to bump it up by one so that at least one, this is basically just saying, hey, this is too small, okay? And this is too big. So I could hopefully get another set. Sometimes your guess will be so small that you could get two more, but you just wanna bump it up by one. That's the whole point of guessing something that is close. Look at, if you guessed six times four is 24, but if you had guessed initially, that seven times four is 28, you would have been really close in the first place. So your um, finding the correct quotient would be then to think about the multiple of four that's closer to 29. So seven times zero is zero, seven times four is 28, and now when you do your subtraction, you get 19, compare that. Look this is okay because it's less than 40. I cannot make another set of 40. And so this remainder is okay. Okay, so um, it looks like Terry didn't
compare. And so you might say, well, what's wrong with this problem? Well, you know, mathematically it adds up, but it's not the correct number of sets, okay? So some kids will say, but it adds up, it figures out, and I'm like, but this is too big. All right, a number divided by 80 has a quotient of seven with four as a remainder. Find the number. Oh, this is what, these are always really fun. Okay, so let's set it up. A number, a mystery number divided by 80 has a quotient, remember that's the answer, of seven with four as a remainder. Find the number. How can you do that? How can you do that? Think carefully. You have a strategy and we've been doing it even today. I know how to get this number and we've been doing it all on the previous page. It's by multiplying the numbers on the outside, just like this, and then adding the remainder. Because this is the check. You need to do the check in order to get the answer. And so my number on the inside would have been 564. So those are really fun, and I'm pretty confident that you're going to get tested on this at some point. <laughs> These are one of those higher level thinking um, where you don't actually have to do uh, the I got the lights again, where you don't actually have to do the division because sometimes people will just kind of get in that mode where it's like, oh, I'm doing this the division. I'm just going to blaze through, and this is a whoa, slam on the brakes and think about what you're doing. Okay. So the last one, while swimming a two kilometer race, Adam changes from breaststroke to butterfly every 200 meters. How many times does he switch strokes during the first half of the race? All right, so um, let's look at this. We've got two kilometers and we've got two, every 200 meters. So the first thing you wanna do is you want to put everything in the same unit so that you can compare. So why don't we change it to meters and then we'll have an exact number. So I want to take my two kilometers and say how many meters will that be? Because you can't compare things that are in different units. So use the strategy, the two times one kilometer, and then have the equivalent, remember this? Two times, what's the equivalent amount of meters to kilometers? That's right, it's a thousand. Now I have two times a thousand. And so your new unit is 2,000 meters. So um, if he changes from breaststroke to butterfly every uh, 200 meters, then I'm gonna take the total length of my race and divide it by all the the times he changed every 200 meters. And so when you do your division, you might notice that we have 100 here and 100 here, which could really simplify your problem. And then we have two divided by two, which is one, and then the zero can come down. So 10, how many times does he switch strokes? So he switches. 10 total, but how many times does he switch strokes during the first half of the race? So, five times in the first half. So that's the benefit of going back and rereading the problem 12 times, or as many times as you can um, in the first half. Uh, as many times as you can, because they have so many different places where you can um, have a different answer or forget a step. What if you left it at 10? You would actually get it wrong because they're asking about the first half. So again, this is a super tough program, but, uh, but you're going to get the hang of it. So nice job. If you like these videos, uh, click subscribe or tell your friends that they're helping. I just want to help you kids get through this program because I know it's very challenging. And again, um, I'm going to be on break next week. 
but I'm gonna come back and try to do another like video every single day because I feel like this is really helping everybody. So keep up the good work.